Hey, everybody, this is Fernando from The Eleven Count, and Eddie and I are here today to speak about wrestling. Do you know what we're talking about today, or you have no idea? Well, I mean, I know that uh, you want to talk about the Tuesday Night War, quote unquote. Yeah, Tuesday, yeah. Um, So, folks, everyone who's going to listen to this should know. So, uh, it all started... Uh, one wonderful day, AEW was told, "Hey, heads up, we have a we have a game we have to show. I think it's a finals game, maybe. Um, we got to move you from your Wednesday night slot to Tuesday. We have to. We don't have a choice. All right, cool, fine. We can move to Tuesdays. We've done that before. Here's the thing: there's a there's there's another wrestling company that exists on Tuesdays. Uh, double ex- double E. Yes, and uh." I, I love I love this part. I love how publicly WWE is like they're not competition. They're a, they're a t-shirt company. They're a piss and company. It's not a race. It's a marathon. Can you bring up the quote where they say that? Because you put a lot of fucking words in people's mouths. Yeah, Triple H has said that in interviews. He called AEW a piss and company. I oh, want the is. quote and the link. Piss and company AEW. Bible select. Uh, da, da, da. I will. You want me to send you via email? Is it when uh, he was getting inducted with D Generation X? Let's see. Hold on. Because uh, I think it was. I think he said that you when they were in the U. Oh wait, yeah, when he was being inducted. Yeah, I'm like come on. No, that's no, like, you asked for the fucking quote. That's like saying you asked, fucking, you asked for the fucking quote. That's you like saying fucking, fucking boy talk is. Is uh is grounds for fucking being strong and beaten. It's not, it's because you and I both know we would be fucking murdered for what I we. Mean, have I didn't said. have a live mic in my hand when I said it though. And he also had his buddy, who's in that company, right in front of him. Let's see. Don't care. You asked for the fucking quote. Anyway, any fucking way, they've been called a piss ad company. They've been called a t-shirt company. There you go, I just oh, the t-shirt company. company I haven't heard before. Um, what's it called? So piss ad company, t-shirt company. Fucking uh, that they're not competition, right? But I love that happens, and then behind closed doors, it's like, all right, guys, they're coming to Tuesday. We we can't let them beat us on Tuesday. That's our day. We have to move Wednesdays. We have to move for Wednesday. So here's what we're gonna do. Who are the two biggest draws? That we have on the payroll right now. Cena Taker? All right, put them on NXT. Who else? Who else we got? Who are the hottest acts in the entire fucking company right now? Rhea Ripley, Dominic Mysterio. Yeah, they'll draw ratings. Get 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 Cody Rhodes there too. Yeah, get Cody Rhodes. Get Cody Rhodes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's NXT Mania up in here. Whereas for AEW, it's like, bro, it's just Tuesday. Okay. Like I doesn't it goes to show that uh I mean, Dominic's not even a main eventer, and he still draws more ratings than AEW's best. Mm, does a little he sad. Does he though? I mean, you just said that he did. All of them combined? Yeah, sure. How much that... of that was Dominic, and how much of that was Taker? And well, I mean, why are you including him then? Because they brought in someone that's not normally on NXT. It sounds like Ooh. you're a little upset. So, no. There. I, no, I get a. I'm not gonna lie. I get annoyed when it's like, oh, dude, they're not a big deal. Bring out all the big guns. It's like, no, fucking. They brought like, out the, all the big guns. Did Shawn Michaels pop out? Did The Rock pop out? You and I both know. Did Roman Shawn, Reigns pop you out? You and I, you and I both know that Shawn Michaels is not as big. Of a I mean, I'm just saying. You said Taker. they brought out all the big guns. Oh fuck you! You're being semantic right now. You and I both know what the. Oh, fuck you don't like being oh, semantic you, you, right now? Oh, you, you think? Cool. He Holy said it fucking quote. shit. Hold yeah, on, let me get the shit. Hold on, hold on. Eat shit, bitch. That is shut the fuck up. Hey, shut the right fuck there. up for a minute. Let me talk. Hold on. They, Got Cena, you with your own you, You're telling me your team. You're telling me Cena and Taker are not big draws. They're not. I never said they are they not. Okay, so they bring out Cena and Taker, two guys that have never even wrestled on NXT. Ooh. Two guys that are, for all intents and purposes, part timers. Cena and Taker. They oh. brought them both onto the fucking show. Did they wrestle on NXT? No, but you and I both know that was the poor ratings. 
They pulled the same shit. So I remember, I remember, I remember this story in particular. In 2016, um, in is 2016- Is it not common for older wrestlers to give a rub to upcoming guys? Not on NXT. It's not that common. Why not? It re- because it's not. They pulled out the. They pulled them out because of that AEW. Triple shit. H gave rubs to all those guys every time. They That's showed his up fucking on show. That's his fucking show. Then it is common. No, it's not. Okay. If <sighs> fucking show, what's a decent example for this? God damn. Okay. In twenty six in twenty sixteen, SmackDown ratings were going down. Right, they were go. They were going mm-hmm. to toilet. They needed right, a boost. Smackdown. They were le- they needed a boost. Uh, this is before they were on Fox. They needed a boost leading into uh, to Survivor Series. So, in case of emergency, break glass. They call in the Undertaker to come and threaten Team SmackDown for the last ten minutes of the show. All of you better be victorious, or there will be consequences. Doesn't fucking wrestle. Everyone knows they need a boost in ratings, so they bring out Taker. Isn't like that that's what that's what he's for on your payroll no but the point is not that they brought him out the point i'm trying to make is the fact that it annoys me when they say oh they're not competition but on the other side of the coin hey man who are the two of the biggest draws that we've had in the past 20 years the biggest thing that you're supposed to do when there is competition is say they're not competition wcw this is where the big boys play huh um i just find that annoying commonplace I find it it's annoying. also scripted. God damn it! I find it annoying. It doesn't matter what you tell me. I think that that's annoying. I'm like that. That's a little. Eddie, annoying. You know that wrestling is scripted. Yes, I'm fully aware. Like that's okay, sure. even even in uh, there was a. Do you know about the court case with MLW or no? No, I don't even okay, know who so, MLW is. So MLW is relatively small time wrestling company. They're slowly growing bit by bit. They were supposed to have uh, a one to two hour block on Tubi, right? Uh, just to like you know start to present themselves, get bigger, you know. Really? Like that. Yeah, Tubi. Jesus. Mm-hmm. Hey man, you got hey Adam. We don't have a show on Tubi. We only have seventy seven subscribers. I would rather uh, cut my balls off than be on Tubi. You're getting paid hundreds of thousands of dollars. You wouldn't want to be on Tubi. They're not going to be getting paid hundreds of thousands of dollars. You never know. Fine. Ten thousand dollars a month to be on Tubi. You wouldn't do it after taxes. Of course I would. I need all the money I could get. There you go. You'll be on Tubi now. Shut the fuck up. Anyway, MLW has this deal with Tubi that's tentative, but but it's a MLW major league Dun- wrestling. Yes. Yeah. Uh, gross. Um, but they allege that uh, Stephanie McMahon herself, Tubi is owned by Fox. She told Fox, hey, don't fucking uh, let this, don't let your subsidiary hire MLW. Like squashing them that fucking much to a point where, hey, don't let this small little under company that's no threat to us, don't let them on your show. To a point where MLW filed an antitrust uh, lawsuit against WWE. WWE themselves named AEW as competition in the lawsuit. They cited a Friday Night SmackDown where AEW beat uh, SmackDown. Where the they allege in court documents, the bunny outdrew Brock Lesnar because the AEW bunny? had a larger rating in that one like thirty minute block. The bunny, uh, the butcher, the bunny, and the blade. They they were a tag team on AEW. Oh, um, so you get upset when they don't call in competition, then you get upset when they do call in competition. No, no, I want them to call. It. I wasn't upset at that. I'm annoyed at the fact that. Like on one side they're saying, "Oh, dude, they're nothing." And on the other side, they're doing everything possible to undermine them in every way that they can. It's like that's that just isn't that irks me a bit. Competition that irks me. That does irk me. But isn't that what you're supposed to do to competition? I don't know. I feel like AEW. I feel like they've done. I don't want to say a better job, but I like the way that they've approached it differently by saying, like, no, a lot of the people, like, wrestlers, when they get to AEW, what do they say? I'm here because where I was wasn't fulfilling me creatively. Most guys do. Not everyone. You have your exceptions, obviously. Daniel Bryan being one of them. Adam Cole being another. But 
oftentimes they come out and they vent. They say, no, like that other place stifled me creatively. That's punk. Um, but I don't know, man. There's just something about that that bugs the shit out of me. Although, I'll critique Tony Khan right now. Do you know about his tweets? I've heard bad things. I've heard... So, there were things. The, things were said. His demons won that day. So, Tony Khan went on a Twitter rant. I mean, dude, that. honestly, I think before, he was you sober. Continue, before you continue, that's yeah. what happens when you have a dude who his whole th- shtick is him playing with his toys. Running the company. Granted, I get it. Like, the best thing for a company is to have a fan running it, which is fine. But he also doesn't know when to shut up. So here's the thing. And I heard both sides, and I'm not quite sure who I believe in this one. On one side, it said that these these tweets kind of came out a bit unhinged. On the other side, it was pointed out right after these tweets were sent out and they got a lot of traffic. Right after these tweets, he was posting about the matches for next week for AEW Dynamite. Okay. So it's like, is he trying to work the fans and trying to get more publicity, or was he going on a rant? If he's if he's trying to pull a work, I I don't think he's good at pulling works. Maybe he's not. I, he's not the best on the mic. I think you have you seen this video? That's really? for damn sure, dude. He doesn't blink. He's so awkward on the mic. It's cringeworthy. He doesn't blink, man. That I think that's the thing. He like every every time I see him on the mic, I'm like, Ugh. like you really look uncomfortable. Ugh. But uh, so he made a point of like saying how he was proud of AEW. You know they did well. So on that ratings, do you know what the ratings were that day or no? Mm-mm. It was about a three hundred thousand rating difference between NXT and AEW. Mm. He commented one tweet was basically. I want to see them pull that shit. I want to see them pull that shit if they come to Wednesday. We came on our off night. I want to see them come over to our off night, essentially. Um, He also made a point. I just don't think that's a smart idea. What? Like, you're poking WWE, and at the end of the day, it's going to look bad on WWE. It's going to look like they're punching down. They have nothing to gain. Huh. You're actually not wrong. I'm not. Because WWE, like you said, is the pinnacle right now. Yeah. They, they they have fine-tuned the art of pro wrestling to the point where I think everyone thought like <coughs> this would be where it's at. Because um because I mean they're global, they're all over the fucking world. And if they start poking at AEW, it's going to look like them punching down. I think AEW wants that, though, if we're being honest. Exactly. Of course they do. Because guess what? It gives them eyeballs. It gives them credibility. Exactly. So, on the AEW side, so Khan, so that first tweet, fine, whatever. And then he made some kind of, he took a shot at Cena and Taker and said, it's kind of funny to me that the one time Cena and Taker have either one have been on a show that drew less than a million viewers, it was when they went toe to toe with us. Something along those lines. Like they took a sh- he he essentially took a shot at Taker and Cena. And apparently within WWE, that was seen as a declaration of war. I I feel like that like that war has been ongoing, man. Like that's the firing line. Which war? Between AEW and WWE? Yeah, there would be, apparently it was seen. Meltzer reported that from people in, within oh, WWE. Oh, fuck Dave Meltzer. And that I'm, old bitch can fucking go run a hole and die. Why do you hate him so much? Dude, because he, I don't know, he says that he's not like the the who's who of pro wrestling um, uh, writers. But, and he tries to act like his words don't mean anything. Mm-hmm. But they obviously fucking do. But like, don't his words only give them a, on, his words are only as powerful as much weight as you give them, though. No, and he's gotten that weight over years and years and years of doing this shit. Yeah, like but... he's been in he's been in the business as long as the, as pro wrestling has been a thing. Like he's like he can act all he wants. Like what? I'm just a guy. I'm just a guy writing words. 
what? I'm just a guy. I think that's the more annoying part is that he acts like he's just a guy when he knows fucking well that he's not just a guy. Yeah. You know, man, I, okay. It always, not bugs me, but it, it's, I don't get why people give him so much credit when it comes to like the melted, like the star ratings. Yeah. Like that. It, the time where I realized, you know what? Maybe Meltzer doesn't know everything. That's the that's more of the old heads because he is more a product of the old heads of wrestling. But like like when he didn't give Taker Michaels a 25 five stars, I was like, you know what? Maybe maybe not this guy. Maybe not him. Because there are a lot of the matches I can agree with him on. Like a lot of the Omega Okada match, like mm-hmm. the hour the hour five hour ten minute match that they had, fucking incredible. I will agree with him. But then there's also times where, like, the dumbest thing. No, that wasn't a five star match. He didn't give uh, Angle Michaels at twenty one five stars. Like, really? He didn't give Angle Taker at No Mercy five stars. No way out, two thousand six. But yes. Oh, sorry. I I just remember the no. I uh, just re- I just remember that being one of my favorite matches of all time. Yeah, he's never given Angle a five star match. Which is fucking nuts to me. Well, and then he was fun? on Chris. He was on Chris Van Vliet saying, "What? Maybe he does deserve a five star match." Well, then, bitch, why didn't you give him one? I don't know, man. I don't know. I feel like he does have something against WWE guys and just dudes that weren't in wrestling to begin with. I no, I think he has a thing against Vince. Oh, I'm sure he does. Like between the steroid trial controversies. Uh, between the attendance figure controversies, between all that shit, I'm pretty sure Vince and Dave don't like each other. I'm sure they have to. Maybe it's also because Vince, I think Dave Meltzer was around when Vince cannibalized the territories. So maybe he took it personal, like, you son of a bitch. Mm. But, um... But, but yeah. When those territories fell, wrestling went global. I mean, that's just sometimes that's the, the old has to die for the young to survive. Um, no, you're not wrong. Well, also, I think we're seeing a revitalization of the territories, but this is it's global territories now. Hopefully, fucking WWE doesn't cannibalize them either. Well, no, WWE has had a hard no, time they won't doing be able it. to. And even then, it's the whole punching down situation, it wouldn't be of any use to them. To put AEW out of business or to go toe to toe with New Japan, because one, it's just different products. Like they yeah. both offer different things. Uh, well, no, like okay. So, how much do you know about uh, NXT and in its expansion and uh, Triple H and trying to do all the stuff? They had an expansion. So, do you know about NXT UK? Oh yeah. So NXT UK was meant to be the first branch. <clears throat> WWE was initially they were going to have NXT UK, NXT Japan, NXT Didn't Mexico. Didn't COVID kill that? Uh, I don't know if Cody killed it. Uh, Not Cody, COVID. Sorta, actually. Um, leading that, into, tw- isn't that when NXT UK went out of business when COVID happened? That too, yes. I mean, they continue to exist, but they started going down. But part of it was also the fact that when they were trying to expand it in Japan during 2019, every wrestling company that they went to to try and buy told them to fuck off or gave them an outrageous figure. So WWE was like, well, fuck, we have to build from the bottom up. And the cost of that was so absorbent that they were like, dude, is this worth it? Because they were losing money on NXT UK. And at the time, when they were still running out of full sale, they were losing money on NXT. The Performance Center wasn't turning a profit yet. Um... So between that, they were also in talks at one point to buy either CMLL or AAA, and they both said, again, fuck off. Um, and India does not have a big like pro wrestling scene at all. So they were trying to like, okay, how do we get this to work? COVID happens, kills uh, NXT UK and their global localization uh, plan. I hope they don't. I really hope they don't. Like... Because think about it, man. What if this? What if this? Um, what if Bud Light, like just the Bud Light, the brand, said, you know what? We're going to kill every beer brand. We're going to 
slaughter them all, and there will only be one supreme beer brand, and that's Bud Light. That that's not a world I want to live in. I think the better analogy is like, what if, what if ABC, or what if ESPN killed Fox and NBC from playing from playing sports programs? I think that'd be a better analogy because there's too many beers. But what if all the beers were killed and there was only one beer? All beers. All beers were killed. You're you're saying they're going to order 66 all beers. Yes. Imagine that if doesn't Bud make Light any had, sense, Eddie. Imagine if Bud Light had that power. Is that a world you want to live in where Bud Light is the that only That doesn't make any sense, Eddie. No, yes, it you're does. Saying Fuck some you. ridiculous things and, you know, sometimes I'm behind you. This just doesn't make any sense. Fair enough, I guess. Um, but yeah, I don't want that. I don't want WWE to rule the world because I, you and me, live through like the worst years. But Eddie, WWE will never rule the world because there will always be people that do not like what WWE puts out, and that's fine. Mm-hmm. It just takes a company and money to come out to go against it. And that's what AEW did. But they're the first, like, leg- okay. But they I, had so- the money. That's why. I'm sorry, TNA, man. I'm sorry to TNA. AEW TNA first- could have done it, but then they fucked up, like, their core value. They, god damn, man. I, I if they would have TNA- stuck to what they were, mm-hmm. they could have lasted. You're not wrong. I. And they still technically exist, but they're not the same. They're not oh, what they were. God, every time I see impact like videos, I'm like, ugh. I really wish Tony Khan would buy Impact and and NWA. That way new people could come up. Because that's Honestly, another when thing. they when they went from TNA to Impact, that's where they lost me. TNA sounded so much better than Impact. Why was why did they change from TNA to Impact, you know? Um, the company sold no. I have no idea. I don't know if that was a Jeff. Jarrett I think situation. it was when Dixie Carter sold the company. Uh, they felt like, oh my gosh, we invested so much in this brand. Yeah, it's a stupid brand to invest in. And then oh. they created. Then they turn into like global wrestling or some shit like that. No, so Jeff Jared um started his own company called Global Force Wrestling, and then he yeah. merged it with Impact Wrestling after like fucking six months. Yeah. Oh, okay. So the problem was Spike TV, actually. Spike TV was like, hey, the name TNA sounds stupid. We're rebranding. You have to rebrand, too. So they had to get a new name. So they rebranded to Impact Wrestling. I would rather have total nonstop action wrestling than fucking Impact Wrestling. Yeah, they would have still called it TNA. Like, why is that so bad, TNA? Tits and ass. That's what Spike was about. Yeah, but now when they were rebranding, dude, Spike used to be the dude channel. I remember that. I and then know. they remember rebranded. They had like the Man Awards. Channel. The what? The Man Awards. I don't remember those, honestly. Why? What happened on those? I, the like the the trophy was like a uh, deer antlers, like mounted deer antlers. That actually sounds kind of badass. Oh, you mean the they guys also used to have the video game awards on there? Guy's choice, that's what it says. Guy movie hall of fame swingers, okay. Biggest ass kicker, Gerard Butler. Hot is Jessica, Jessica Alba versus Jessica Beale. Okay. Uh, I I would take Beale on that one. Uh let's see. Hottest girl on the planet, Scarlett Johansson versus Jessica Beale. That is a toughie. The hottie of the decade, Cameron Diaz. Really? Cameron Diaz? I don't know, man. Harrison Ford versus Matt Damon, guy of the year. Oh. Huh. God damn. Okay, let's see. Guy of the year, Chris Pratt, 2015. Uh, top fantasy player, Russell Westbrook. I like yeah. WWE when they were on Spike or TNN back then. I eh, I started watching when they went back to USA, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, you were not there for the... TNN days. I remember when they were announcing that they were going back to USA. I wonder if they're. I wonder if that's awkward with the networks whenever you're leaving. No, it's business. I mean, it's awkward at first, but like, 
I think when you go back, you go back. That's it. Mm. Oh, never say never. Do you think there's any truth to the rumors? Well, actually, I know it's it's a lie, but how much would your mind be blown if uh, if Punk did go back to AEW? You mean WWE? I mean WWE, yes. It wouldn't blow my mind. He's pretty much left with uh, no one wants me. Where can I go where I can at least get a chance? God damn, maybe he's literally in the rain singing. Maybe in New Japan, they'd want him for a few matches. Well, did you hear? uh, Apparently, Edge had an unscripted uh, spat with Ricky Starks. No, what the fuck happened there? Uh, Edge was going was digging in on him, making fun of his silk, uh, his silk wardrobe, calling him, saying like, uh, that oh look at you trying to steal the rock stick from all the way back then, and he's like, know your role, and talk to Daniel Brian or Brian Danielson. Let's see, uh, let's see, as the vanilla midget version of the Rock. Yeah, there it is. Oh my god. Wait, is Ricky Starks the one that does the dance? No, that's Daniel Garcia. Ricky Starks is the one that beat uh CM Punk for the Owen Hart challenge. Oh, that's right. Oh, Jesus Christ. Man, god damn it. Daniel Garcia and his pelvis dance is fucking hilarious. Uh you know, Daniel Garcia taught me that you know what? The attitude era makes sense for different people. Why? Because I always thought, like, shit like, um... Choppy, uh, choppy, your pee-pee. I always thought that was dumb. But, like, uh, like when uh, Too Cool would dance, I was like, this is stupid. Dude, that was awesome. That was the only reason I loved playing WWF No Mercy on the 64, <laughs> was when you played as Too Cool, if you won your match, you got to do the dance at the end. Well, like, okay, I- I'm not going to dispute that, like, they were funny back then, but I never got it. But now that I see Ricky Starks doing his you dance... You grow up on it. Yeah, but like I understand other attitude era stuff. That I'm like, oh, okay, this is funny or this is cool. I feel but, like you missed out on some prime wrestling. I feel like I missed out on some bullshit too because if you look back on it, look at the watch those old Raws. Most of the time, the matches were like three minutes, if that. Three minute chair shot, rinse and repeat. At least they could do chair shots back then. Oh, I'm sorry, we don't want people with concave heads. They know what they're getting into. God damn it, Freddy. Would you take an unprotected chair shot to the head? Yes. How much money? If it looks cool, yeah. For no yeah. Money. Oh god. Hey, I don't know. I, oh shit, we're I watching LA we're watching him this uh this weekend. Well, I'm gonna be watching him very closely. How close okay. How fucking close are y'all gonna, gonna be? Wave at you. I'm gonna be like, bye. <laughs> How close are you gonna be? Uh, I don't know. Darian sent me a picture, I think. Let me see. Let's see. Um, we'll get to see Jimmy. We're Russo. on the floor. That's for damn sure. Let's see. You For how much y'all paid, y'all better be on the fucking floor. I think 300. Goddamn. All right, let's see. We got LA Knight versus Solo. So- oh, shit. They swapped out with Austin Theory. That's awesome. Damn, we're going to get a good main event then. Well, then Austin Theory might have gotten hurt then. I, dude, no, he's he's listed on there too. I just think All he's right, not I sent gonna... you the, the map of where we're supposed to be. What's it called? Um, I just, we're don't like, think... I think behind the announce table or um, the section behind the announce table. Nice. Okay. You're going to get a good view. I have no, no way, idea where you. the fuck we're sitting. Hi. Fuck you. You want to get dinner before or dinner after? We could get dinner after. We could meet. We could go to my. We could meet here and then just take the car from here since I live close. Bitching. Uh, okay. Let's see. We got LA Never Soul Sakura. You can give fight. Darian your ticket and then you could come sit with me <laughs> and her and Nikki could sit in the rafters. <laughs> you know, they don't even want to be there. You know, this is my birthday gift, right? <laughs> this is the best birthday gift. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you're a monster. If oh, she God. loved you, she would let you do it. 
<laughs> I'll show, I'll play this for her. This will be like fuck pretty. Oh god. Okay, so we got LA Knight versus Solisakoa. We got Charlotte Flair versus Oscar versus Eel Sky. Uh, oh, so we're gonna see the match. women's champion. Yeah, we're gonna see a triple threat match. Oh. Let's see. We're gonna get Hot. Jimmy. It, up to you. Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits. Bailey right. and Shotzi will be there. Uh huh. Here, Karen Cross as Scarlet, meh. The LWO, they'll probably get the biggest pop of the night. Yeah. Or maybe Raquel Rodriguez. Yeah, she more than likely will. She's a hometown. Uh, this is her hometown, uh, like her hometown, her home territory. What's called? Do you know? Um, God damn, I can't believe they don't advertise her more. Like fucking, she should be in the in the in the title match. Like like. Fucking that would be that would legitimize it. Yeah. She would she wouldn't win, but no, but like I mean, come on. Like that looks that looks that did you see uh did you see LA Knight's promo with Roman Reigns? I saw the camera, I saw the picture of Roman Reigns in his Oh, in his the reflection? Show. That was a yeah. that was a really good picture. I I saw that. You know the, the, the segment was actually pretty good. <coughs> I was gonna say fucking um I know like Roman Reigns was shit talking Cena and Cena was like nah I don't want you he does no nah, he wasn't shit talking Cena oh I thought like they were like cutting a promo like oh Cena Roman Reigns no sorry I thought you said LA Knight no yeah he was shit talking Cena he was like uh if you're gonna come on my show you better announce it right damn okay Jesus. and then uh and then Cena's like you've been gone a long time and then here comes L.A. Knight, and he's like, uh, he's like, Tulsa, Oklahoma, let, tell Roman Reigns whose game it is. L.A. Knight, yeah. Hmm. God damn. L.A. Knight, dude, it's such a shame at how old he is also. Like, they didn't use him sooner. And then Kevin Owens got drafted to SmackDown. Which I don't think anyone was expecting on that. I didn't even know that they could draft them this late. No, so apparently the deal was uh was that um the deal was was when Jay Uso went to Raw, SmackDown gets someone. And I think everyone and their mother, including me, assumed that it was gonna be Cody. Turns out, nah. Well, I think since Cody's undisputed tag champion, he could be on both shows. What's called? I don't have they talked about that as to what's going on there or no? Well, they fought on SmackDown. True. And wrong. then he had a face to face with Roman after after SmackDown. Let me see. Let's see. Event details. All right, question. Would you rather be in Bird Ogden on Saturday or Sunday be in Laredo, Texas, where we get to watch L A Oh the fuck? It's the same. Never mind. I wonder what you, the... You had me at Laredo. I would never want to be in Laredo, Texas. Even if it was going to have Gunther, Seth Rollins, Rhea Ripley... I Mikey would Lynch, rather and Cody. cut my own balls off. <laughs> What's wrong with Laredo? They think that they're all better than us. They don't Do consider they? themselves the Valley, even though their area code is 956. Shut the fuck up, Cortana. A little sign in here. There you go. Shush. Uh, I'm res- I'm resetting my laptop. It was it was running too slow. Ew. Let's see. Why'd you get a new laptop? I don't know. Just that with all like that, that money that Nikki's raking in. I know, dude. Hey, baby, I'm gonna get myself a new laptop. Oh yeah. Huh. Let's see. I would get Double. a service. In all honesty, huh? And so, unless you're gonna be doing video editing. Then don't get a service. No, that's why I have a. That's what I do on my laptop, man. It's all the video editing for us. Get a ThinkPad. Let's see, how the fuck do I turn this bitch off? Done. All right, no more fucking mic. All right, get a Lenovo ThinkPad. Let's see. Duck, duck, no. Eh, fuck that. I'm closing it. All right, man, we really got way the fuck off topic. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So back to the Tuesday Night Wars. Who's going to benefit the most? AEW. I mean, by a long shot. It's not It's not fucking close. I was going to say the fans. Oh, yeah. The fans benefit the most. Company-wise, uh, AEW is going to benefit the most. What's it called? Well, especially, I mean, they're on Wednesdays, and they're doing fine. They just got edge, so hopefully, you know, shit grows. Well, did you see the pictures that, well, I guess leaked of Collision when Edge was there? Yeah, no, uh, there was it was the pictures from the from the of all the seats were, that were like empty. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they were from the from the side of where the hard cam is. That's not yeah. the whole arena. That's where the hard cam is. Which, to be fair, yeah, no, that looks bad. I'll say this though, as I understand it, skip. Uh, as I understand it, they were kind of expecting it to look like that because the last time they ran through that area, they only sold four thousand seats for that arena. Jesus, they really don't have that big of a falling as I thought they did. No, well, not in every area, man. Like in Seattle, sell out. Cleveland, Ohio, sell out. In that weird well, arena, it's Ohio. They don't have anything else to do. They fucking suck over there. Well, also, John Moxie's their favorite, so there's that. Shocker. Uh, Moxie's no, waiting. He's from, <laughs> he's from Ohio. Don't you know? No, I didn't know. Oh yeah, so he's a hometown boy. So no, different areas they draw differently. Um, Survivor Series just fucking sold out, so there's that. Although I wonder if they're gonna get hijacked or not, because fucking Lord knows, um, Lord knows that uh, WWE, that AEW fans are famous for wrestling fans are famous for not hijacking shows. Well, didn't uh, Paul Heyman has that famous story of him uh, thwarting the fans hijacking the Chicago show after CM Punk left? No. Oh, no. Fuck you never no. heard Tell- that story? Nope. Yeah, he went out and he defused the fans before like they could hijack the show. Wait, which show? The first Raw in Chicago after CM Punk left. Really? I don't I did not know that story. Yeah. Paul Heyman. Stops but, fans from hijacking Raw. Stops fans from hijacking Raw. It was one of those inside the ropes videos. Let me see. I wonder if they took it down. I don't know. They always do that shit. And then they end up putting it back up. Hmm. Oh, smart Chicago fans during attempt to hijack Raw. There it is. Uh, also, uh, tricks. despite this, uh, Hyman brilliantly spun Sting Spug Confetuous Absence forward. He mentioned their punk and inability to beat the taker at WrestleMania uh, 29. Heyman then touted he uh, touted his pet Brock Lesnar. Oh shit! Brock Lesnar spoke by himself. Yeah. So this is the quote from payment from Paul Heyman. Payment from Paul Heyman on uh, Inside the Ropes. Vince McMahon did not know that there was a move to hijack Monday Night Raw, and the entire show was laid out, including Brock Lesnar, Paul Heyman promo, and about ninety minutes before the show. I went to Vince and I said, are you aware what we're facing? We were just weeks before WrestleMania and I showed him on my phone just a sampling of what we were about to face on that show. It was the termination of a very passionate crowd in a very passionate city to take over that show and heckle the show for three full hours chanting the name CM Punk. Paul Heyman said that he and CM Punk see the pro wrestling industry much in the same way as the industry moves forward regardless of who isn't around anymore. They did this for Bruno San Martino, and CM Punk would be no different. After all, if the company doesn't move on, then what have we built? Therefore, CM Punk understands how things work, and Paul Heyman had a plan. So, he tells Vince McMahon, I want to fuck with him. What are you going to say? I don't know, but I want to fuck with him. Paul (laughs) Heyman said his plan was to say he wishes CM Punk was there at Raw that night, which brought Vince McMahon to question it. But Heyman turned it all around, saying... That he was going to blame it on The Undertaker. 
Paul Heyman asked Vic, Vince McMahon to trust him with 15 minutes of the show so the crowd could get all their CM Punk chants out and then they'd pay attention to the rest of the show. Yep. Huh. Shit. All right. Good on them. Wow. I did not know that that happened. Yep. They were to fucking Paul Heyman to outsmart, to outsmart the fans. I mean, he was the one that was kicking Raw's ass from the inside. What's called? Have you heard that story, right? How he fell asleep and turns out, no, nah, I wasn't listening to you all this time. Oh, and he fell asleep at a raw meeting. Yeah, and no, he was so, getting inside details. Yeah, well, no, when the when he fell asleep, when he actually did fall asleep that one time, but he was didn't like, he join a like a voice. Uh, then he joined like a conference call. Yes, but he he left his phone not charging. Uh, so it died mid conference call, and they were like, "Who the fuck?" Like on the phone, I said, oh, "You know, so and so has exited the thing." So. Isn't that Vince why he got him. suspended or fired? Yeah, I, I think he got suspended, not fired. But they chewed his ass out, and he was like, hand to God, I was not listening that time. I did <laughs> listen to 10 other times before that, but that time I actually did fall asleep. I wasn't listening that time, I promise. <laughs> do you think uh, Vince has... Do you think Vince... Let me phrase that. Why do you think Vince doesn't like Paul Heyman, as Paul Heyman has told it. Because Paul Heyman is exactly like Vince. What do you mean? Paul Heyman will do anything for the pop, like Vince would. Paul Heyman is a fucking psychopath and would do anything he can to get over, like how Vince would. And he is as competitive as Vince. God, I wonder if you gave if you nah Vince would never be the stupid. I would kill to see what Paul would do if he was over the AEW. I would kill for that. I mean, if they gave him like free reign, like if they were like, here, you have collision, do what you need to do to make this show successful. Yeah. I mean, just think about what he would have done. With ECW, if he had a bankroll behind him, well, he even said, I think I, on one of the inside the ropes, I remember him saying, if we had kept going, because you know how they went bankrupt because they wouldn't get that payout for one of their pay per views? Yeah. Uh, he said, like, oh, Seth Rollins would have been one of my guys. Finn Balor would have been one of my guys. Prince Devitt, all those guys. Daniel Bryan, come over. No, I wouldn't oh. be surprised. I'm pretty sure most of those guys would have loved to wrestle for ECW. No, because even though ECW was this hardcore wrestling, like it was a wrestler show, like they yeah. did have wrestling on there. They had Lucha when Lucha wasn't popular. They had Japanese fighters when Japanese fighters weren't popular. Like they had all the shit before they got popular in WCW and WWE. You know, I was watching a video earlier today on Facebook and it was... um it was some luchadors in, but old, old WWF, like in 95, I think. Mm -hmm. And it's insane at the shit that they're pulling off, which wouldn't be out of place today, and how the crowd barely reacts to anything. They, they barely reacted to a suicide dive. Because they don't know what they're looking at. No, but like, dude, you've seen these incredibly acrobatic and athletic guys like spinning each other around right before like a 450 splash and you don't react you're not like what the fuck but that's why they don't know what they're looking at they're so used and conditioned to the wwe wrestling that they see something new and exciting that they're just kind of like what the fuck is this like i'm pretty sure some people in the audience were like they're moving too fast you're right they were like this this looks fake yeah says the person throwing the work punches and it, it can come off that way. Like, it does come off that, that way. Like, as ironic as it sounds. Like, yes, those overly, like, um, choreographed segments, they do yeah. come off as fake because they do. They look like the fucking. Uh, <coughs> they look like the Star Wars fights from the prequels. Yeah. Mm, you're not wrong. Granted, I've always loved the Star Wars fights in the prequels because I'm like. 
what don't you get? This is when the Jedi are supposed to be at their peak. Of course, they're going to be fucking masters with the sword. I think there's. I think I saw someone. There's like eight different fighting styles for Jedi. Like, it's better than what we got in the fucking sequels. I wouldn't know. I only watched the first one. Fucking, you get, you get fucking children fighting with those swords. That's what you get because they have no idea what they're doing. I. So they don't. They didn't choreograph the fights at all. They did, but they choreographed them like if it was children fighting with these swords. Because remember, they don't know what they're doing. So, but that makes sense, then, doesn't it? It does make sense, but it doesn't but make it. It doesn't make it like fun to watch. I feel like there would have been complaints either way. Either there's complaints that. Oh man! Yeah, like, there's gonna be complaints either way. Yeah, you're a hundred percent right on that one. Like people are gonna pl- complain, like, "Well, the prequel ones look too choreographed. Well, the sequel ones they look f- like idiots fucking slashing at each other." It will never no work. one wins. Let's see. At, le- at least in the prequels, we had some good shit. I will say that. The two fights that are the best in the prequels is Darth Maul versus Obi Wan and Qui Gon, and then Obi Wan versus Anakin. I was gonna say, even I know that fight's the best one in the entire goddamn series. But no, nah. but uh, back to WWE. Um, wait, wait, should we wrap it up? It, is this is this going to be permanent? This Tuesday night deal for no, no, I, no. It was a one time episode. Oh, okay. Hence, you know, NXT Mania, brother. Mm. No, uh, then. I don't know. People make it out to be more than what it is. But, yeah. So, folks, that's going to wrap it up for this episode of The Eleven Counts. This is a YouTube exclusive show, which also, Franny, maybe you'll take some pride in this. We seem to always get a, a, a bump in subscribers every time we post one of these episodes. So that's fun. Really? Actually, yeah, we always get like one or two right after we post this. So thanks y'all for subscribing. Because we don't know what the fuck we're talking about. Yeah, but maybe that's why. We don't know what the fuck we're talking about. We're just normal dudes. That is true. Yeah. All right. Bye, everyone. Thank you for joining us for the 11 count. Please catch us every couple weeks. We will put out a video. God knows when we're going to get to the Montreal screw job. But it's on our list. <laughs> Thank you for joining in on that. Should be the running joke. <laughs> the month, yeah, it will be. <laughs> that will be our Matt Damon got bumped today. <laughs> what if we get so big? We have one episode where we get Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels on. This is fucking Bret Hart will <laughs> probably beat the shit out of both of us. Is it? Is I think we could take him. Now we could. <laughs> yeah, right now. But I have a feeling he would be like the old guy from uh from uh Ready to Rumble. <laughs> Sal Mangini, one <wanna> wrestle. <laughs> oh no. Oh god, no. When they're walking in the fucking stairs and you just hear ah! <laughs> Oh god, wasn't that supposed to be a reference to Stu Hart? I think so. I assume so. That makes sense. God, but yeah, thanks for joining us for the 11 count, everybody. Thank you and good night.